Now we're going to take a look at the Sentinels. This is the team based on the 1991 New Orleans Saints. This is a rarity in breakaway football because this team did not win a playoff game. Most teams in breakaway football are iconic single seasons, and if you're a Saints fan, you remember this team. This is the team that had the Dome Patrol, Sam Mills, Ricky Jackson, Von Johnson, and Pat Swilling, arguably the best linebacking core in the history of the National Football League. This team also was very good at creating turnovers, so they have a strip ball mechanism, and unfortunately, their offense was somewhat anemic in the second half, resulting in the too much time mechanism, where you have to follow a certain pattern in order to actually run clock in the second half. The Sentinels offense features three formations. They have an ace twin tight end, which is their run heavy. They have a slot form, which is their balanced formation, and shotgun is their pass heavy. On the defensive side of the ball, they've got a 3-4, which is their run heavy, and a nickel, which is their balanced. This team does not have a pass heavy formation on defense. So when you're setting up with the Sentinels, you're going to want to take the uh, Halma Pons here and place them on top of each linebacker. Those numbers are actually the numbers of the linebackers themselves, Sam Mills, Von Johnson, Ricky Jackson, and Pat Swilling. So you're going to place them here, and those are your linebackers who are ready to assist on a play. You're also going to want to take your three stackers and put them right here. Uh, they'll be come into play in the second half for the too much time. This is how you set up the Sentinels. So the Sentinels have a conservative ball control offense. It is challenging to move the ball consistently with this team. Generally, they have good success early and they struggle late. Let's take a look at the Dome Patrol, which is one of the ways that they can dominate a game early with their linebackers. So let's pick up the action here in the first quarter. The Fire have the ball at the 45 first and one, and they're coming out pro set versus nickel. And we're going to see that this is a long pass from the fire and that the Sentinels have come out in a blitz. Seven on four is going to be a gain of three on this particular one. And so if the Sentinels want to avoid that, and this is actually a plus one, so right now the gain is four. So the way this works is if we want to use the Dome Patrol, we can actually use the linebackers to increase the play value by one. So in this case, they have a value of four. So if I want, I can actually max out my defense to match theirs. By spending one linebacker, that would change this four into a five. Seven on five is a gain of two, plus one would be three. But let's say that I want to put a maximum blitz out there. I can actually spend three different linebackers all at the same time to plus this four up to a seven. Seven on seven is nothing. Because it's a timing pass, they'll still gain one. I can't use that fourth linebacker to take away the card. The most I can do is add enough linebackers to increase my card value to match the offensive play. We'll pick up the action later in the drive. It's now second and four from the 40 for the fire, and they've come out in an I form versus three, four. That I-form play is a play-action pass, and the 3-4 defense is a press. We, we see that we have three on three. That is a gain of nothing. Now, if we wanted to add this linebacker, we cannot. The linebacker can only increase the play value to equal the offensive play value. Because they are both already equal, I cannot use this linebacker to increase the value of my play. Let's pick up the action now late in the drive. It is third and goal from the 10 for the fire, and they've come out with an I-form versus 3-4. I-form, they're calling a special run, a reverse, and the Sentinels have called man-to-man. -man. That will defeat. This is a breakaway for the defense. That activates the strip ball mechanism. Anytime there's a defensive breakaway, you're going to resolve it first, and then you're going to draw an extra game day card for every active linebacker in that quarter. Because we started the quarter with four linebackers, which is what we start every game with, four linebackers, you're going to pull four extra cards for the strip ball. And any time a football icon shows up in that defensive corner, it's a turnover. So let's take a look at what happens here. We're going to resolve the play first. And so this is a minus one. 
in that upper corner. So it's a guaranteed loss of one. They've stopped the play, but the linebackers have the opportunity to create a turnover. We're going to pull four cards because it's the first quarter and we had four active linebackers and we're going to flip them all over and see, and there it is right there. We've got a turnover. So the Dome Patrol was able to create the stop. These all go into the discard pile and wow, Sam Mills with the strip and that is Sentinel's ball first down. We'll pick it up now in the second quarter. The Sentinels were forced to punt. Now that we see it's the second quarter, we have to change the number of active linebackers that there are. See, we lose one token each quarter. So that means that we will reset our linebackers, but only three of them. One of them is gone for the remainder of the game. So this is what we look like now. We have three linebacker tokens here on the Dome Patrol, and that means that if we generate another defensive breakaway, that that strip ball opportunity will now only pull three game day cards. If you've spent linebackers during the, um, during the quarter, uh, it doesn't impact the strip ball. Let's say you've used all three of these and you generate a defensive breakaway, you're still going to pull three game day cards because that's how many linebackers you have active. Obviously, though, in the fourth quarter, excuse me, in the third quarter, you're only going to have two linebackers available. And in the fourth quarter, you're only going to have one available. So that strip ball becomes less effective as the game wears on. Let's skip ahead to the third quarter now. You see that the Sentinels are leading 10-3. We're going to take a look at the too much time mechanism. These three stacked tokens represent cards that the opponent can pull back into their hand. Think of them as free timeouts. At the beginning of the opponent's next drive, they have the option to pull back into their hand this many cards. Whether that is three, two, one, or zero is up to the Sentinels. The purpose of this is to force the Sentinels to have to work off this additional time by means of this pattern. Run on first down, run on second down, pass on third down. This pattern, once it's followed, will allow you to remove one token, leaving only two there. And you'll be able to do that every time you complete this pattern. You can remove a token until you have none left. So here on first down, let's say that the Sentinels call a special run, halfback delay versus goal line. Three on four is going to be a loss of one. But a move the pile plus one means the ball stays right where it is. It's now second down. Here on second down, we see they've gone slot form versus 4-3. Those plays are inside run versus tight run. This is a minimum gain of one, so they're only going to gain one. Game day card comes up. Oh, it's small in the hole, so that's actually going to be a gain of three. One for the matchup and two for the game day card, and it's now third down. Here on third and two, the Sentinels have gone shotgun, long pass versus a nickel man-to-man. -man. Right now, this is a seven on three, a gain of four. And we'll see if it's a, it's a low accuracy pass. So let's see if it's complete. Oh, and it is not. That is a run penalty, but it is red text. So the penalty will not apply because this is a pass, but the red text means it is incomplete and it is now fourth down. Take a look though, that we have the pattern that we need. We ran on first down, we ran on second down, and we passed on third down. We can remove a token permanently from the game, leaving only two on the card. Because the Sentinels have so much deficiency on offense, they can be a very challenging team to coach. This is definitely a team that requires skill and expertise as an offensive coach, but the defense is very forgiving. As a result, the Sentinels end up having low-scoring shootouts.